Some of the questions that you might find when you're working through past papers involve a curve that has been given to you. And sometimes it's a rational function, like y is equal to 1 over x minus 3. And it's known as a rational function because if you think back to what a rational number is, a rational number is one that is written as a fraction. And where we have here a, effectively, you can have a polynomial over a polynomial. So it's written as a fraction, OK? And it's known as a rational function. So here is y is equal to 1 over x minus 3, for example. And you might be given an accurate graph of this, um, drawn on proper squared paper. And you're then asked to draw accurately um, another line, or it might be a curve. Uh, in this case, we've got y is equal to x minus 1. And we're going to draw y equals x minus 1 onto this. And then we're going to look for solutions. Now, I want to uh, explain a little bit more about this curve before we do that, OK? Um, this dotted line that's going up the middle uh, identifies it as having an asymptote at x equals 3, OK? So what we have is that the curve tends towards this line, this vertical line, from both directions. So as x approaches 3, we get closer and closer and closer to 1 over 0. And it's at 1 over 0 where we have this asymptote. Now you'll also see that the curve approaches the x-axis from both directions. That's because as x increases, so if you think of like x, to the, x equals 1,000, then you've got 1 over 997 which is very, very small, OK? And the larger x gets, the larger the denominator gets, and so the closer this gets to 0. And so that is why the curve is approaching the x-axis in that way. And likewise, it's approaching the x-axis in this direction as well, because as x gets larger and negative, so when x is minus 1,000, we have 1 over minus 1,003, which is negative and very small. And as x continues on its way to the left, it gets larger and more negative, And this gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so it gets closer and closer to the x-axis. So this is the shape that this graph would have. We're now going to draw on y equals x minus 1. Now, I can't do this incredibly accurately because I'm working on just a whiteboard. But we should be able to draw uh, straight lines and quadratics. Quadratics, um, uh, you will most definitely want to have um, a little table drawn. So we're going to draw a table for this as well. So you'll want to uh, choose some x values to put into your table. OK, so we might start from uh, minus 3, for example. And then we will use these points as coordinates, OK? So when x is 0, we're at minus 1. And so in each of these cases, oh, apologies, um, we will gain a coordinate, OK? So we'll have minus 3, minus 4, which we'll be able to plot. Uh, minus 2, minus 3, minus 1, minus 2. And then we're going to be able to draw a nice accurate line through the graph. So let's say it ended up looking like, well, it's going to go through minus 1 on the y-axis. And it's going to go through um, the x-axis when uh, x is 1. So it's going to look something like this on my graph. So no, this isn't going to be perfect, because I'm drawing this for freehand. OK, so I don't know, maybe something like that. It's not, it's not accurate from my, from my perspective, but OK, so that is what the situation that we would have. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to estimate where these two intersect. Where does the curve and the uh, straight line intersect? And they intersect with each other there and there. And what you can then do is you can read off the x value from both of these. And you will be able 
to uh, get an estimate for the solution to putting this equation equal to that one. Because we know that intersection means simultaneous equations. So algebraically, we're looking at estimates of the solution to this equation. And you can read them off from your graph. So if I was going to do this um, algebraically, then I would multiply both sides by x minus 3. I would then have to expand the brackets, so x squared minus 4x plus 3. I would then have to um, take 1 from both sides. Okay. And then I would use the quadratic formula. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we would get 4 plus or minus, um, well that's 8, so square root of 8 over 2. So root 8 is 2 root 2, so we would have 2 plus or minus root 2. Now obviously they are the exact values of where this curve intersects the line. So this would be 2 minus root 2, and that would be 2 plus root 2. Okay. So if I then uh, use the calculator to get the exact, well, the decimal version, then this would be 0.58578643766. So 0 0.59 to two decimal places. And this solution is 2 plus root 2, which is 3.41. Okay? So to two decimal places. So obviously, you know, this, uh, we don't have a calculator to hand, and that is why uh, we would use a graph in order to do this. Now, the same exact technique will work uh, when we're intersecting any curve. Um, it could be um, a curve and a straight line. It could be two curves. Uh, but the same technique still applies. You find where they intersect, and then you can read off the x value. Okay, And this allows you to solve very complicated equations uh, to a reasonable degree of accuracy, of course, depending on how accurate your graph is. But this is the process that you need to go through, um, and hopefully that will help.